Okay, we're ready. Let us know when you're ready. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Directors of Community Television of Santa Cruz County. Today is June 28, 2012. Ali, would you like to do the roll call? James Fisher? Uh, here. Tess Fitzgerald? Here. Denise Kalon? Keith Fetcher? Here. Joe Hall? Here. Karen Machado? Present. Does anybody have any oral communications to the board? Don't make me first. Anybody else? Uh, Ron Holman, member of the public, also staff member. Uh, I want to talk real briefly about one of, I think, the most difficult jobs in the world, <laughs> which is being executive director of community television, which <laughs> I think a lot of people can testify to. Uh, some people have occasionally said, why don't you want to? It's like, why don't I? What are you, crazy? <laughs> it's, it's a really difficult job. So you can see where I'm going with this. I really want to thank Mary Ann for everything she's done. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> drum roll. I like the spotlight. It's appropriate tonight. I hope you can hear me. Sandy Lee, independent producer here at Community TV. Uh, I got so much to talk about. Some of it's on the agenda. One of the most important issues I want to talk about isn't on the agenda, and that's fundraising and fund development. I have some great plans, and instead of being dismayed by a lack of uh, response to my things, I figured I'd do a song and dance for you. So here we go. But I'm dumb. Hey, I want to do a telethon, a Black Friday telethon. We'll make lots of money. We'll have lots of fun. We can do it right here, and it won't cost anybody anything. You can all help, or you don't have to. Just support my idea of a telethon. I'll have bands. I'll have music. I'll have political people. And most of all, we'll have sponsors who want to sell their Black Friday things on our show. We can have lots of fun. We can make lots of money. Act two. Pledge drives. <laughs> Why can't we do pledge drives? <laughs> Everybody else in public broadcasting does pledge drives. Why can't we do pledge drives? Two times a year, that's far less than PBS. We can make money. We can have lots of fun. At three. Board, I love you, I love you. Oh, dear old board. Why don't we have a casino night and a dance and dinner? And we can have lots of fun and make lots of money at Coconut Grove. Board, hi, mommy, hi, mommy, please, board. <laughs> Let's make some money and not sit on our hands, board, please. Thank you. <laughs> Should we uh, clap? <laughs> I know. I, I Great stop. performance. <laughs> <laughs> Made for TV. <laughs> Thank you very much for the, uh, the entertainment. We um, appreciated it. And applause. Yes. Um, does anyone else have anything? Okay. We're going to move on to the consent agenda. Um, I'd like, I'd be happy to entertain a motion to approve the minutes unless we need to have a discussion of them. Okay. Also, we're just, the consent agenda, you just approve it all at once unless there's an item you want to pull. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fine. We can do that. I didn't know if anybody had any particular things they wanted to talk about in any of the I items. I wanted to comment on number five before we do it. No, not to pull it, but just to make a comment. Okay, is that within our... Yeah, I just wanted to mention that I've uh, talked to the one contributing member to the 401k plan just to ensure that that member was uh, uh, comfortable with my appointment as a trustee. It's pretty much an administrative thing, but I think that's just a courtesy you should do whoever's in it. And I made sure that the fund is in a uh, financial institution that can be, you know, considered s solvent and reputable, which it is. 
And uh, so I will pursue it with diligence and uh, hopefully that will be a very routine thing. But I just wanted to let the board know that I did look in this a little bit more than just sitting here because I do, when you do these things, I at least personally think they are a matter of trust and you do need to communicate with the people that have funds in it. So that's all I wanted to say. Well, thank you for being willing to step into that position. We appreciate it. <coughs> yeah. I'd like to request that we pull the minutes of April 26 and continue them to the next meeting. Okay. Do, do we have to? Is that okay? We don't have to take a vote on that, do we? Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> what we do is uh, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda without that one particular item. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. So consent agenda is approved with the deletion of the minutes of the meeting of April 26. Mm -hmm. And we will table that to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, moving on to the regular agenda, item number six. Keith, would you like to report on that? So at 5.30 p.m. on June 25th, uh, Matilda and I completed counting all the ballots and there were 103 ballots received, 89 for the measure, 14 against, and 151 votes yes were required for the measure to pass, therefore the bylaws of the corporation are not amended. And I don't know if you've got a copy, but this is a, a copy Thank of you. the... Thank you. Did anybody have any comments about that? Okay. Uh, we do. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear whatever public <laughs> yes. comments there are first, yeah. and then we bring oh, okay. back to the board and see what they have. All right. Say. Well, then we'll open up the floor for public comment. All right. Great. Well, yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't here at the board meetings when this all came up, and some of you might have received my letter stating my feelings on this. And I'm not against the merge completely. I think there's a lot of things that we need to research before we go forward with the merge. I was dismayed, though, with the arrogance that this is it or else we're going to dissolve the corporation. And I'm really sad that this is coming from our government appointed officials as opposed to the team as a whole. It's like, you know, we try hard as producers here to do TV shows. Uh, I'm so blessed with a great following in Santa Cruz. People love what we do here. They love what we stand for. They don't want to see us go away. The public is behind us. Now we just got to get the government behind us too. You know, I know you're all here working hard and trying to keep this afloat, but when I hear this, well, they got to vote for it or else, that really scares me. And it's hard to put my motivation behind you guys when you're, you're not looking at the big picture. And so when it was brought up that let's do this in stages, let's look at the merge, let's talk to Monterey, then let's go to the people. That was a fabulous idea. And I really wish you would have supported that. I think this is still a good idea. Let's talk about it some more, but don't try to take our membership rights away. As an organization, we want to fight for this company, and I would hope that you guys would fight for us too, because we want this to stay. I hope you want us to stay too. Um, one of the things that we discussed at our meeting on June 18th is that particularly about this vote, that it was more about al allowing the board of directors to move forward with, um, I don't know, being more nimble in taking the organization in any certain direction. So the vote wasn't really about the merger, and I think there was some confusion about that, just to, to clear that up. It was more about allowing the board to make decisions on behalf of the organization, not that we don't want to hear about what the members have to say. But. Uh, Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I, I think there were some people that worked really hard on the election, and uh, I'll wait until they have their comments and how we proceed forward and what we do next. But I just want to make one thing clear, is that there is a, a kind of a deadline coming as to the future of community TV. And I think that, personally, that's what's motivating me. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that deadline, then you could do things in a way that are perhaps slightly different. But when you have a deadline coming up, and you see the financial implications, I think you need to move and be nimble and be able to adjust to it. Also, having been involved in a lot of fundraising, I can tell you it was an interesting set of ideas that I heard, 
but a lot of the groups in town are doing it. There's a lesser pool, so sometimes you have to look at different ways to do it, and that's why I thought the merger seemed to make sense, is you pool your resources because there is a smaller amount of community funds out there to support all these competing groups, and there are a lot of them. Uh, I did sit through a lot of telethons for KUSP, and they don't do them anymore. They do direct <laughs> mail, and so it, it is going to be a change here, and how it comes through, we'll see. There may be other options. I personally think the merger is a very logical one, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. But I just wanted to bring that one point of clarification up, and that's what personally drove me, because I don't want to be sitting here in a year from now saying, well, we should have done this or we should have done that because we're approaching another year of, of problems. So anyhow. Anybody else? I wanted to thank Keith and Matilda for um, serving as the inspectors. You guys did a lot of work, and I know that you weren't necessarily all. Well, and the staff, I mean, everybody, but I know that you two were kind of like, I don't know if I want to do this, so I appreciate <laughs> your having done it because I have confidence that it was handled appropriately, and um, that's important when we're going through um, things like this with the membership and the organization generally, so thank you. Yeah, I remember the night before I took off on our vacation, I was sitting here <coughs> stuffing envelopes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <there laughs> and that was my last uh, attempt. Yeah, six of us. Seven I of was us. wondering, Keith, if you want to review, uh, if you have it with you, and if you want to review what we discussed on Monday with a couple of board members about some of the, the new ideas. And, and thank you, by the way, for giving a great presentation at the board. And, and James was there uh, too, and of course, uh, you had no choice being there, but still, thank <laughs> you for being there. And uh, so we had some ideas, and I was wondering if you would summarize some of those ideas. I didn't bring the minutes you sent us. Would you I mind? Didn't either, so, uh, you didn't either. <laughs> I can kind of run down them, I, I, <laughs> but I think Keith should do it. I think just if you discuss. What we talked about yeah, that so would be good for everybody else. Nothing. Dory was there too. I, yeah. I don't think it has to be exactly to the minutes, but right. just to the just topics an overall. and the discussion and the ideas. Well, the main issue was making sure that we have a membership that will vote. Um, as we discussed, it's not that the membership was not in favor of changing the bylaws, it's that the members didn't vote. Um, 103 out of 300 is maybe great for an uh, election for the city council, but it's not acceptable for what we're trying to do. So what we looked at are how can we make sure that we have a membership that's motivated and will vote, and how can we get that membership out to vote? And so we talked about membership meetings, dividing the membership up per board member, making sure that each one gets a personal call from a board member, offering to go to their house and pick up the ballot. And I think other ways of managing the ballot, as you discussed, Matilda, yeah. um, Denise, we are limited. The bylaws do require it to be a written ballot. I know we're in the 21st century, but it has to be a written ballot. So we need to look at ways. Right now, there's one ballot per person. It goes out. If it gets lost, we can't do anything about it. So I think we need to look at ways to make sure that if a ballot gets lost, we have a way to replace it so we can still get that member's vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'd like to suggest that the ad hoc committee meet again because if we, we are will. going to do another election, we need to kind of get the process moving forward. So, um, I, you know, I'm not, you know, involved in scheduling that. But do you have a sense of the timing of what we need to do and when? Well, we've talked about trying to wrap up uh, another election by the middle to end of September, having the election ongoing when we go back to the. Board of Supervisors in July, uh, in August, in August. August 14th, mm -hmm. um, which means we would have a date of record in July, mm -hmm. uh, and then have about a 60-day period to close it, which brings us to having a board meeting in July to set the date of record and call for the election. If yes, I'm not, we, tell me if I'm wrong. Anyway. No, no, no. I was there too at the meeting, and. Um, what we discussed was tonight we're making a decision about a new executive director interim person and we need input from this person yes. and maybe that person will have some ideas and hopefully because I understand we have a wonderful pool of three that we're choosing tonight so I think uh, putting this off till they have some input is very very important we're not putting it off I mean 
working side by side. Yes. We well. actually, <coughs> during the interviews, we, we did talk about mm -hmm. uh, the need for <coughs> more members to vote. Yes. You know, because the oh, bylaw yes. says that we have to have 50% mm -hmm. plus one. So, uh, and, and they have given us already some ideas, which oh, is really okay. great. Okay. Um, so, you know, I really, I really thought that, you know, Dory, Joe, Keith, and I, was anybody else that night? And the staff. And, Kathy and, and Ron. Yes. Yes, Ryan. Kathy and Ron. Yeah. And I thought we came up with some, some really good ideas on reaching out to the members and being more clear. Mm -hmm. Because even tonight, there is there there still is the understanding that the whole vote was we we'll go for the merger, and that's not you know in order to to uh, explore the merger that was a prerequisite, but it doesn't mean that that's the only option that we will end up with, and so the clarity of the information that goes out to the members to vote on, uh, I think we got more you know, we get better at it and, and clearer about it. So that's what we hope will, will happen and that more people will review what is written. And because this time I think it was a little rushed. We had to do it because we had to do it before this board meeting and also before we had to go to the uh, Board of Supervisors. Right. I mean, you know, the 25th was the date that we uh, closed the ballot. Right box and the next day we had to go to the Board of Supervisors. I think this time we can time it in a way where we can catch mistakes and incorrect, uh, not incorrect, uh, just try and clarify, not clear information to the members. So that's that's some of the things we talked about. Uh, I really appreciated that, that evening actually. Thank you, Joe and yeah. Dory. And, and I just wonder, just as a technical matter, and I don't know what the answer is, but if we do decide to have another meeting, can the chair call the meeting without us having to talk about, because also we need to figure out a date that people would mm -hmm. be available. So mm -hmm. if you want to wait till after the executive director interviews, you want to continue this item till the end of the meeting and then everybody decide when you want to have a meeting. Yeah. Because yeah. that would be a lot easier That's on everybody if you're all here than to try to do <coughs> emails and pick out a date that would work or just set it now. We don't have to set it at this board meeting. Any two board members can call a board meeting at any time. Mm -hmm. So what I would propose is that after this meeting's over, let's just look at our calendars, okay. and then yeah. Karen and I can call a meeting okay. in July that will work. For I just thought everybody's here; it'll be fast. Yeah, we'll do it at the at the end, but okay. Good. informally. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so I have a question: the, the the next time we vote, is it going to be the same for the same thing, basically? <sighs> but more clear. Uh, yeah. Clearer. Uh, okay. Right. So it I, was I very know. confusing. Thought, the same hmm. amendment to the bylaws. Okay. Is I thought the emails were clear. I, you know, it was more during the discussions when Kathy was here that it kind of was, oh, what's she doing here, kind of thing. But um, you know, I think in the emails it was pretty clear. So, you know, it's just like, how do you find the people that aren't participating? Right. That's the main issue. Don't let them know that it's important. Right. And then that's the thing we have to avoid is is not trying to do the same thing and expecting different results because I, I think that was the definition of insanity. Of, yeah. According to was it Albert Einstein? I can't remember who said that. But Sounds good. We, yeah, we have we just have to be careful that we some somehow we we change our our plan a little bit so to get better turnout. Well one of the things we have now that we didn't have when we started the process last time was we have this really involved group of people who showed up at the last couple of meetings that were really interested, yes. passionate, caring, and able to work with them within the membership, I think. And, and that's something that I think we can really draw on and build. be nice to work with the membership on that. I'll make a motion to certify the um, <coughs> special election results. Okay. I'll second that. OK. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the discussion regarding a potential merger with CMAP. And it seems to me that since this um, vote did not pass, it really was of tantamount importance to enable us to carry these discussions forward. I think um, while we're all greatly disappointed by this, it's it is a setback, but you know at the same time it's just going to force us to be a little more creative in how we approach this. So I didn't know if anybody had any thoughts about this, how we want to 
discuss it with them at the moment, um, but I can certainly open it up to public comment because I see a hand over there. So, Ron. I think that the idea of looking at a shared services agreement is a very viable thing that we can pursue. Uh, the board is empowered to do that. Uh, complete merger, no, not at this time, but there might be other strategic alliances that the board is certainly empowered to look at. So I wouldn't say let's just forget about it. Let's, let's continue to see where we can save money by pooling resources. Thank you. Hello. Yes, I... Could you state I, your name, please? Th this is David. I'm David Perez. Um, I agree totally with Ron and my friend back here. Um, we would like to look at merging with CMAP, but we all want to look at it. We all want to make a decision with you. We, I, I haven't heard, and I, this is my second board meeting, I haven't heard a lot of great ideas coming out of here. And I haven't heard a lot of great ideas coming from anywhere. So it's, I'm not saying anything uh, about the board, but I'm say, I, I feel it's very important for the people, for the membership, to um, and get themselves together because they're about to lose something, whether they lose it to CMAP, because it's going to be lost to CMAP, um, or whether they can, we can't, I, I understand, or maybe I don't want to accept that we can't continue as we are because it will require a lot of, of creativity in order to raise some money, um, but I can't, I, 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 there's just too many opinions here and too many ideas that I would um, like to hear if the membership wants to save their station, there is a way we can do it. I don't want to give it up. I don't, I, I don't want to give it up. I would like to see that we uh, do get a, a new director um, for community television. Um, somebody with hope, somebody with a vision, somebody creative, um, because apparently it's kind of, it's, it's in television programs instead of um, creating uh, a viable community television. So I, for one, am, uh, I, I don't want to give up my uh, membership vote. And I would like to look into uh, joining with CMAP, but they need to find some reason to want us as opposed to us giving all of our authority to you. Because you, as far as I'm concerned, the board is, is, is ready to go with CMAP if they make us an offer. Okay, I don't see the board saving us. So unless we get a new board or we get a lot of, or, or, or there's a lot of creativity here or there's a lot of imagination, um, I, we might as well go down the tubes or get saved in a couple of years. I don't want to give up my voting, uh, my voting rights. I don't want to give up community television. I'd like to see if we can get a, uh, a, a new director who has a vision for us to go forward. Um, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. That was very powerful. Moved me. Uh, you know, I don't want you guys to get all optimistic because you got 87 versus 14. The other 200 people probably just didn't vote because they don't want this to happen this way. And it's a lot easier to just vote no than to go through the whole tap dance with you guys. I think you're going to waste a whole lot of time and money if you try to do this again this way. Uh, my story with Kathy Bisbee. I don't know if any of you were here when Kathy was an employee for the six weeks or so that she was here. Yes. My time with her. I'm sorry, this is inappropriate. Yeah. We, we, we can't this really. This is a personal attack. Well, no, it's yeah. not. It's like there's well, we... her, her feelings towards the station at the time were more for herself and not for the station. I have personal issues that I won't get into for Matilda's sake. I think she's right that is a personal attack and I won't go down that path. But the end result was we spent a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money creating this position that was vacated at the next best opportunity. Now I'm watching these board meetings that CMAP was here. What I got out of it was they won our truck they want Ryan and Daniel. Okay, we don't want the truck anyway. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is when I mentioned, let's lease it to them. 
Let's have them pay us every month for use of the truck. If they want to hire Danny and, uh, and uh, Ryan on the side, they need the extra money, great. But why do we have to go through with a merger that they're all looking for, for their side? And so I said, why don't we do that? And I was strictly told, they don't have the money to pay us for the truck. Well, if they don't have the money to pay for the truck, how are they gonna save us during this crisis? We have a lot of good ideas on the table. One, let's turn this place into a learning facility. Let's move to the tannery. Let's get all brand new equipment and be a state-of-the-art facility. Let's train people. We have some incredible talented teachers in this area that we can draw upon and make this in a facility like no other. I've seen other people do it. It's very possible that we can make this a learning facility during the daytime and a public access station at nighttime and come out way ahead of the game. It just takes a little bit of research and a little bit of insight. And Keith has already touched upon this and we've had some extensive conversations about that. That's just one option that can keep this station afloat during this crisis. I think it's a very valuable one and I can personally talk to any of you and tell you other places that have done this and have been very, very successful at it. I think we could do that too. Other options is let's compress. Let's take the government stuff, keep the contracts. We do not want to take anything away from our county. We do not want to take anything away from our city. We want to provide you all the services that you've always got with the same personnel and the said de dedicated service. We want to provide that to you. None of that's going to change. What happens on the public end, we can make that work. We have enough volunteers, and I've talked about our volunteers. Oh, God, I love my volunteers. They're the best people in the world. You guys are volunteers. You're Sandra, we, we anyway, I'm so sorry, we have to anyway, keep the meeting moving. But I think we can do this. Let's not waste any more money going down the same path. Let's start taking some other pursuits. And I think you'll get the support of the members a lot more. Don't take it that that 87 votes was positive. Well, I did take it that the votes were positive, but that's just me. Um, let's see, one thing I think um, that might be useful is for to really lay out a clear non-political language, uh, what the situation really will be in the next year and a half or so. You know, how much of our budget is really getting cut? And, you know, is it really feasible? And I'm totally into the educational part of it, but, you know, obviously, um, as a teacher at Cabrillo. Uh, but, you know, how much can we really pull in for the, from those kind of classes? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what kind, you know, it, so in other words, we're, we have this huge loss that's going to happen, what, 80% of what our income is, you know, we can't really completely fill that. I mean, there's a lot of changes that have to be made. It can't be business as usual. So, um, you know, and we have been talking about other things as well. But anyway, I guess I, guess, I, guess I don't know if people really know how dire the situation is. Right. So. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of misinformation out there, unfortunately, about what we're trying to do. And hopefully, as the days go by or the weeks go by and our new ED comes on board, we're hopefully going to be able to clear some of that up. So I don't know if um, we really do want to keep this meeting moving along. We do have three executive director candidates to consider. Does anybody have any other um, comments about this issue? OK. Um, so I think, should we discuss this again at the next meeting? Does anybody feel like? Of yeah, is that okay? <laughs> All right, can we, um, we're gonna, I think, table this till the next meeting. Are you talking about the September meeting or at the Probably the July, meeting? the special meeting for July. We're gonna discuss, we'll pick it up again. Cause I, I don't, I don't, I can't ask for anybody to vote. <laughs> There's no action item right. for that. Okay. Okay, um, regarding item number eight, the potential move to the tannery. I don't know, Keith, do you wanna give an update on that? Well, any I, new information that we have? We don't have any new information, and this is the actual lease agreement is the purview of the county. And the city. And the city of Santa Cruz. So I would say if there's public comment, that's great, but the board really doesn't have anything to say about it okay. at this point. Great. Uh, 
And then I'd like to ask that we try and keep it to three minutes, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep this one short and sweet, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, we did this before. You know, again, none of you were here when we had the board of directors and we had the people from the tannery here. Where are you, Dory? Thank you. I'm sorry. And, and you know what? There's a lot of good there. I, again, this is a really positive thing with the tannery. And I'd love to see us get into that state of the art thing and do that. But the, the reason we didn't do it and commit to it was because of the cost involved with moving and taking all this wonderful stuff down. And, and so my feelings is, yeah, let's pursue the tannery as much as we can. You know, and we can work it out that we can get a grant to move the stuff, or even if it works into the timing when we can get all new stuff. I'm I'm way behind the tannery idea. That's why I want to say thank you. Okay, I'll let Ron talk. I'm gonna lose that. That's all right. Uh, I'm not real impressed with the tannery as being a sole location for community television, as a satellite facility. As an administrative and educational unit, I think that it has a lot of potential there. But moving the whole kit and caboodle to a smaller space, it's kind of enclosed in a complex. It doesn't, you know, there are several things. But to me, the bottom line that you have to look at is that the idea of saving money on rent is only good, first of all, for two years, and there ain't no way we're gonna move within even a year, probably. And the cost of moving this facility uh, is gonna wipe out any potential savings in rent. So uh, I'm not saying no, obviously we need to look at it, but um, I I'm not that big on it. We have a really good studio here. We would not have as good a studio over there. Uh, moving is a very daunting job, and I'll be quite honest, that's part of it for staff. We, d we don't have the, the technical uh, expertise that we had with, with Craig Judson, and so we're going to have to hire outside help if, if you want to move stuff, and that's going to be expensive, and there go the savings for the rent. When we get to 2014, I don't think the rent here will be an issue. So there's a lot of different things that, that have to be looked at, but my, my personal gut feeling is what I said initially. Satellite facility, yes. Uh, sole location, probably not. Thank you. Thanks. Can you try and keep it to three minutes, please? Uh, I don't have to keep it to three minutes because I'm gonna agree with Ron and there are plenty of people who agree with that. They're not here. I don't know where they're at. Why are they not involved? Where are, where, where are the people watching this program to get involved? I mean, I saw a few of them here for the last meeting I came to, um, but it wasn't a board meeting. And in fact, there are two people more here than there were at the last board meeting I came to and that was nobody. So um, I'm really disappointed is that the people are losing something and they need to come here and they need to... Uh... I agree, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> we move to the tannery. Okay, so we're still discussing the tannery and um, I don't think we have any more public comments. So go ahead, Dory. I was here la the last time, many years ago, that <clears throat> we looked at the tannery. But at that time, none of us were sure it would even go. You know, it was just this dream that they had here in the city to do all this, and we were reluctant to just dedicate ourselves to moving there. So that was the main reason we didn't even consider it. However, a number of us were there, what, a month ago, mm -hmm. to tour it and look at the space and look at the ideas, and I became very excited because it is a very viable going organization. They have a waiting list for their places there. They are doing so much. If you saw in the paper today, they're having open houses for their uh, different groups. It was a sculpture group that's opening a store there. Everything is buzzing over there, and it's very exciting. I was excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the reason that we would replace this. I've never been in favor of a studio. I taught for many, many years at a college where we had a big, beautiful studio about this size with everything that you have here. And um, I like to go out and shoot. <laughs> so I do my program that way. Also, a smaller space I think would be great because it would be more intimate. I don't think we need to have you know the big, huge things. We're wasting a lot of money with this huge studio that sits here empty so much of the time that to me, I think it's a waste of money. And I think we could go with something smaller and still do the same kind of things that we're doing. And you just need to go over and look at the space and see how exciting it is over there. Anybody else? 
Okay. Um, I think we're going to move on. We don't have it. That's not an action item. So I thought we'd talk about the volunteer recognition luncheon. We would like to set a date for that. And it seems like typically in August. Is that typically when we have it? The July, last, August? Any, yeah, the last couple of years it's been in July and August. Okay. And does anybody have any suggestions for dates for that? Go ahead. Is that a weekend or a weekday, do you think? I, I think it's real important to include the new executive director and some had mentioned vacation dates and stuff when we asked when they could start. So it, maybe setting an, an exact date is a little premature until you find out who you're hiring and what their schedule's like because I think it would be a great meet and greet opportunity mm -hmm. for members to, to get to know the new interim executive director. Okay, thank you. I just want to suggest that, you know, it takes time to get the food donations together and getting the talent and whatnot. And so I, w I wouldn't say August would be very preferable at this point. And again, the, the executive director shouldn't have a pulse on what's going on with this. Uh, as I mentioned in my letter, I'm more than welcome to take this and run with it. I did it two years ago when we were having turmoil. I don't want to see this event go by the wayside. It's important for the station, it's important for the members, it's important for the producers, it's important for everybody and it's great PR. And if you want to start getting the membership behind you guys, doing this is going to be a great way. And you can even use it as an informational time to pass out some information and if you want at that time because you will be talking about uh, other voting stuff. And another cost involved with this that you might want to take into consideration is we send out ballots to everybody so they can vote for their thing and there's the cost involved with the mailing and cost involved with that and if you wanted to do some other sort of election thing and combine it into that mailing it'll save some money who knows what the results will be i don't know but i i, I really want to see this event happen and if i have to do it single-handedly i will but i would hope for support from the staff because i certainly need jack and ron's help with getting the uh, ballots for the voting out. So thanks, I'm really behind this. Okay. You know, I might suggest that those are some, I think, good points I just heard is that maybe the chair and the vice chair work with the executive director and set a date in August. We'll never have a date when all of us are here in that period of time mm -hmm. and just pick a yeah. date and do yeah. it. And we won't have to deal with it anymore this evening. Right. Is everybody okay with that? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, bowling fundraiser. Let's move on to that. That's the other thing we'd like to set a date for. Did everybody feel like that was a pretty successful, fun event and they'd like to do that again this year? Yep. Okay. Did it bring in as much as other years? More. Well, that was our first year. What was our second year for a fundraiser? Well, second year for a fundraiser. It was the first year for the bowling fundraiser, second year for an October fundraiser. But yes, it did bring oh, in. October, exactly. the, the, yeah. the only thing that I would suggest is that you do not do it in October because Women Care is also doing a, a bowling-thon uh, in October, very successful, you know, make 60000 plus dollars. Oh, yeah. So I would suggest not to do it that close to uh, towards the end of October when they do it. Okay. September? Yeah, the 29th of September is a Saturday towards the end of the month. Okay. That's the begonia. Isn't it like begonia it? and uh, the other, the yeah, end of? Oh. Labor Day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why we always had it in October, because when I originally planned the dinner fundraiser yeah, know, a couple know. years ago, I did a lot of research about annual events that happen in, in Santa Cruz, and we were trying to work around the begonia festival and, and a few other things that were going on. Um, my recollection was that we were actually going to have an item on this meeting to address the appointment of a committee to discuss this mm -hmm. oh, okay. so that we're not doing it in okay. the meeting and taking up time. I don't know that since it wasn't agendized for that, that people have really had time to think about that. So we might want to consider putting that on in July as well. Okay. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that? Well, you could establish a committee now. Okay. So it's not, it's not been agenda. Yes. Yeah. It says discussion, action, referring, bowling fundraiser. What? Not appointment of a committee. I think our original idea was just to tentatively set a date. October so. 1st is a Monday. Right. So yeah. The following weekend. Okay. Six, and we can discuss it at our July meeting. 
That's fine. But obviously there is great enthusiasm. Yes. yes. No, I, I think the consensus from the board is definitely that we want to do it again. We did make money. It was fun. People enjoyed it. It was a way to get people together, a way to get our local luminaries to participate. But um, As far as the, the impact on the staff, is there, I mean, I know I was involved in it, and as far as how much was it, did it feel about, I mean, does it weigh out for you when you were there? Do you think it was, if you're not here, yeah, I mean, I think we have a lot of the be? templates and everything. I mean, a lot of it was just creating it because it was our first time ever doing it. Mm -hmm. So imagine how it was all being, getting all the paperwork together, getting all the packets, like getting the system down is what we spent a lot of time doing. But I mean, so we have the system. It's just carrying it forward, I think, would be a lot less work. Though I would recommend finding a different website besides right. First Giving because they took too big a percentage and it was kind of clunky. Yeah. Um, and also, before you set a date, you would have to call Willie at the bowling alley yeah. and make right. sure they don't have anything else going on. So. Right. We need to set a committee up. Yeah. yeah. It, October might be early. Just it would be nice to get a lot of energy going before we. Maybe it's good to do it when it's raining too. Supposing yeah. it ever rains again. We'll, set a committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll put it on July the seventh. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about it. Remember the song. It never rains in California, but man, when it, <laughs> it pours. Okay, so. It looks like we'll set up a committee in our July meeting, and also those people who are on the committee will have to be calling Willie. And, and I assume that those dates. those who are interested in it, there's there's no n nothing holding back and fighting out when when there are other annual things going on. So yeah, though that's the one thing the committee would be tasked to do. Anybody who's going to set a fundraiser, you have to check all the other events that are going on in the city and county that same time. Right. Because we don't want to have too much of a conflict. I just want to say from the public end that, and a member, that it was a fabulous event. And I applaud all of you for doing such a great job. And I'm way behind this event also. But I think it would be better to do this in March as a springtime event. Again, October is a great fundraising time. And I'm so wholeheartedly, you did a lot of research. But I would think that would be a better date to do something a little more formal, whereas a bowling tournament is a more springtime thing. And in this fun development thing that I talked about earlier this evening, uh, I, I see a lot of room for us to do a lot more with fun development. And so I would like to see the bowling thing happen in March and maybe a more formal event happen in October. Okay. Thanks for your input. Do we have any other public comment regarding the bowling fundraiser? No? Okay. So we're going to, you got that. <laughs> Um, Ron has been working on an environmental policy for community television, and I'm going for item 11. Ron, would you like to give us a little overview of that? Sure. Um, the history of this was Allie managed to get a grant from the Community Foundation for $1,000, I think, uh, to uh, move us in the direction of becoming green certified. So I, I took the point on this and have been working out a lot of different uh, things moving us in that direction. One of the things that they need is a policy that has been approved by the board of directors. So that's why this document is in front of you tonight. It, it's really straightforward. Um, I don't think I have to go into any lengthy explanation to this board about you know reduce, reuse, recycle, all of those principles. Um, I do want to say there is one uh, thing that we may have to deal with is Ecology Action did a energy audit of the lighting. And uh, if we stay in this building, uh, we would need to look at that. It's basically a $3,000 retrofit everything. The fluorescents are old and going to be illegal in uh, January 1st. Well, not illegal, but you can't buy them anymore. Uh, there would be a $1,000 rebate. So it would still be a $2,000 expense. It's not likely the landlord would pay for it, but that's a little bit uh, down the road. So basically, this is just an environmental policy. I don't think there's anything in it that is controversial, but if there are any questions, I'd be happy to ask, answer them. Okay. I, I did get a chance to read it over, and I, I do like what we're trying to do. Good. So I'm just, <clears throat> any other comment? Go ahead. Thank you for your work yeah. okay. and for the pursuit of the grant. And I'd like to make the motion to adopt the policy um, 
contained on pages 14 and 15 of the 628-12 board packet. I'll second it. We all lost a second. <laughs> yeah, I know. We all been using it. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. It doesn't seem like there's any further discussion needed. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thanks, everyone. Can I say one quick thing? The zero waste for events is something your committee for the fundraiser is going to need to be aware of. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for pointing that particular item out. Okay. Um, as far as my oral report goes, I, I think one of the things that I've, I've been um, so concerned about with this vote is that there's so much misunderstanding. And I really wish we could have had more people at our two informational meetings, because I think if we would have had a huge turnout for that, I think there would have been a greater um, understanding of where we're trying to go and what we're trying to do. And the decisions, the really tough decisions that we are faced with as a board um, going forward. And I really hope that people will ask more questions rather than jumping to conclusions in the future um, and just try and do their due diligence in understanding what really we are, what task we are faced with. And I just, I really also want to recognize Keith and I, you have just done a fabulous job trying to do a lot of research, find out what's next, asking questions, presenting to the Board of Supervisors. And I just wanted to say thank you, personally thank you. Um, you've really done a great job. And um, on behalf of everyone else who's been working week after week to brainstorm and try and come up with answers and try and figure out where do we go from here? Because again, we haven't really been faced with this kind of situation that we are faced with now. And I just really want to thank everyone for your hard work and trying to figure out what's next. So um, does anybody else have anything that they'd like to add to that? <coughs> Okay. <laughs> Any other board members have anything that they'd like to add? Okay. Well, then we're going to go to the report of the executive director for her last time. Uh, my report is short, and I actually like to go off menu and to let you know that uh, the Queer Youth Leadership awards program that was produced last year. It was one of the first things, uh, a non-sports events that we produced with the uh, production truck, has won the Hometown Award, which is the national award for uh, uh, media centers nationally. So uh, real uh, congratulations to Ryan, uh, Daniel, everybody who, who worked on that to make it, uh, make it so amazing. And um, Unless there are questions about my report, I would just like to say uh, thank you so much for uh, all, uh, for the uh, staff, the volunteers, and the board who have worked so hard. Very much appreciated. And my best to all of you. <laughs> well, thank you, Marianne, for your, your hard work and your diligence. We really appreciate everything you've done for us very much. And I don't, I wanted to, since we're talking about Ryan, going back to my report from the board chair, I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to read the report from Ryan in the back. It's really great about our, our internship program and what he's been able to do with that. So I want to personally thank him for that. Do you have any other comments, concerns, questions, anything? Yeah, I just want to say uh, welcome back, Allie. Allie's oh, decided to, uh, we, we, um, we went back and forth a little bit and made a decision, Tess and I, to bring Allie back uh, as the uh, reporter or the clerk here. And uh, it's going to be nice having some continuity during this time. So thanks. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, moving on to item 13, do we have any board member or staff requests for items to appear on our next meeting agenda? And I, it does say September, but it could be July. Yeah. yeah, this is just the regularly scheduled meeting in September that you guys approved on the calendar. And just note that there is going to be a board election in November, just to put that on your radar, to um, P3 and P4 seats are expiring. Um, so that's Jennifer and Matilda, even though it's like you just got here. Um, <laughs> you guys were both filling seats from people who had been previously elected. So um, 
you know, unless the bylaws get changed before then, we're going to have to have a board election. Okay. Thank you. And you'll make sure that that gets added. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, anything? Other than, I know we've already asked for a lot of things to be placed on our next agenda, so I, I think we've covered a lot of the things that do need to be on there. Um, from what I understand, we have seven weeks from given by the Board of Supervisors to make some changes, decisions. Is that what I understood from your meeting? They want us back on August 14th. Okay. Did they specifically state something they wanted for us on August 14th? Well, I listened to it again yeah. on, on, on the uh, clip that we received, which was done very well by Ryan and, uh, and his crew. Um, um, Supervisor Leopold clearly stated that he wants to see the election in process, okay. not that it has to be finished. I think it was uh, understood by them, too, that it would be too soon, too rushed to have it completely done by August 14th. Okay. But it has to be in progress. And of course, there's lots of other things that yes. in the meantime we can do too. I mean, we're still meeting on a regular basis, ad hoc and all the different committees. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we should clearly uh, uh, outline as well as follow up and record what we have been doing because that will make a difference. Okay. And. Uh, so then maybe we can discuss that at our July meeting, what we need to have together for the Board of Supervisors meeting for August 14th. Yes. I, I think I'd want to request that we put that on the agenda for July. And, and I, I forgot what we said about when is it that we're going to start on the next election for? Probably at our July meeting, I think. We I'll said that we're going to get record. started. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll Same have to do that. And. Did we did say a date for the July meeting? No. Not yet. Uh, we're no. going to do that as soon as we're done with the executive. That's right. I knew there was something. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else before we adjourn to our closed session? Okay. Um, I'd like to thank our volunteer. Oh, go ahead. Um, I, I want to address the issue that you're going into closed session. I was on the search committee, which I want to report it was a really good experience. and. Uh, everybody worked really hard. The applicants were, were just outstanding. I mean, you would not believe some of the people who didn't make it to the next round. And I can say without any hesitation, any one of these three finalists I would love to work for. You've got a really good pool to choose from, and good luck. Because <laughs> it, it, I, I think you're going to, well, may, maybe not. Maybe this final interview, something will shake out. But right now, they, you know, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Ron. And I'll just second what Ron said. Um, I enjoyed being part of that process. And, um, and thank you, Ron, for being part of that as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think um, we're going to excuse our volunteers for the evening so they don't have to stick around and wait for us to come out of closed session. So I would like to thank our volunteers for tonight, Jenny O'Dell, Karen Scott, David Perez, and Sherry O'Neill. Thank you, everybody. We're going to adjourn to closed session. So let's um, take about a five-minute break, and we'll reconvene at 7 o'clock.